Oh boy. Should, huh? Should be able to. Actually, I'm not sure. My, my GPU is not happy right now. But can I get a uh, can I get a yes if this is readable and if the stream is watchable? I suppose not. You can read it on your phone. That's that sounds good enough. Welcome phone. Okay. So I'm going to try to explain the hotline AI today, and I'm going to have to look at my notes. Ooh, okay, so hotline AI. Hotline AI has four elements, also known as AI states. Essentially, the AI works on, like, I don't know if anyone's familiar with this, but like, a I don't even know the term for it, but um, in um, in uh, computational science, you have this sort of this idea of states and these flowcharts between states for uh, systems that are simpler than than the Turing machine. And this is basically the Hotline AI. Hotline AI is just these four states and they are connected by some logic that lets the AI change from one state to another. And it's all, it's all detailed here in this table. So the four states, we should be familiar with this if we've, if we've played enough Hotline, we should be familiar with a neutral AI. So just the normal standard AI that loads into a level. So these are people that are patrolling, that are walking randomly. Um, and being stationary. And the other states will be the charging state one. State one is when they when we, when they really try to kill you. So when, when a melee AI is walking, running at you, that's state one. We'll talk about this more. We're just gonna I'm just gonna just so you have a sneak peek. State two is basically a gun AI trying to shoot trying to shoot you through glass. It's a special state because um Normally AI will shoot but also run at you, but they can't really run through glass. So they put this extra state in here for AI that's shooting over glass. And finally, um, the last state, well, the last important state, there's like knocked down and armed, armed AI, but um, the important state is when, when they're following you or when they're following a sound source or going to the last place they saw you. So whenever they're like, Whenever you've lured them by sound or by visual, that's state three. And we're gonna go through them uh, in this order. Uh, mainly, as you can see, the AI shares a lot of logic, but still um, there are some differences. And the big differences are really between gun AI and melee AI. And melee AI includes fatsos. It also largely includes dogs. Dogs are subtly different and um idle ai we'll have to talk about later so idle ai would be people peeing smoking sitting the guy on the phone and the guard the guard you may have never seen their sprite or you may have seen that sprite very few times but you may have never seen their sprite in a speed run um, but they exist <laughs> and they're part of idle AI. their logic is very different so we're gonna have to mention those. Uh, we're gonna have to go through them real quick at the end. Uh, it's largely it's not too important. Um, yeah, you're probably familiar with this, but I'm gonna go through it anyway because we're gonna uh, talk about about speeds and about random move, which is a nice springboard into this. Um, yeah, so dogs, you know, dogs they patrol like a. I should I should re I need to change this text here, but they hug like a wall, right? And they always hug a wall to the left. 
um, patrols, whether ground patrols or normal melee patrols, they always when they just walk straight and when they hit a wall, they turn left. Which means, by the way, so when you look at the game, when you look at a floor, you often see AI walking in a circle. Not really in circles, but more in like boxes. And uh, Duke points this out a long time ago, that the, each level is kind of full of uh, rectangles. Clockwise? But they walk anti-clockwise. Um, yeah. So they always walk anti-clockwise. Uh, there's not never you see someone walking clockwise, which you never really think about, but turns out it is that way. It doesn't. I don't really think it makes a big difference for the game, but yeah, they they always walk clockwise. And um, I'd like to mention the speeds just for um, I think it's it's a f fun uh, thing to notice. State zero AI walks usually at speed one. So a patrol will always patrol at one. A roamer, when they walk, they walk at speed one. And a dog will also patrol at speed one. So I want to talk about speeds real quick. So speed one, you know, we've talked about this. Speed two would be an AI that has been lured. If you shoot and an AI comes to the sound source, they walk at speed two. Speed two. But when they see you and they want to try to kill you, they walk at speed three, which is the same speed as every mask, except the two masks that you know are faster than that. So um, Richard and most AI at full speed, they walk at speed three. And then Graham, has, Graham and Biker have speed, speed three and a half. And uh, Brandon has speed four. Jacket maskless is as fast as Graham. I call it jacket maskless. Um, it's jacket in his apartment. I'm pretty sure jacket in his apartment walks Graham speed. Yeah. But this does not apply if you get the glitch, the cutscene glitch, where you take off the mask by pausing during a cutscene, and then at the end of a cutscene, you, you, you lose your mask and you're like properly maskless jacket. He doesn't speed up. Like you can't get faster as Tony at the end of Vengeance. It's 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 unfortunate. I thought it, I thought I had such a great idea, but it doesn't happen. Uh, you just keep the same speed. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just as an aside. So speeds, yeah, those are funny. Um, stationaries. Oh yeah, it should be said. Roamers only exist as gunmen and stationaries. Stationaries, they walk back. They walk back home at speed two. I might wanna, does this? It does work. It's pretty easy to, to show actually. Uh, and also I should, I don't have audio for this game. It's actually good. So, ah, why did I do that? Hello. So when he loses sight of me, he walks back. And that exp that uh, applies both to melee and, and gunmen. You lose speed as Graham. That's true. You lose speed as Brandon if you do the mask glitch. Didn't even think of that. That's not fun, but it happens. Um... So yeah, this gun stationary in the melee station, they of course they have speed zero usually, but yeah, when they run home, um, because they lost you, uh, they run home at t speed two. You might not very often notice, you might not very often notice that they run back, because if you knock them down, um, they essentially, every time you knock someone down or you do an execution or some stuff like that, the entity gets despawned. And then a different entity gets spawned. So when they get unarmed, a different entity spawns and unarmed AI spawns. And when they grab a weapon, they do not turn back to their original type of AI. Uh, if they pick up a melee weapon, they become a melee patrol. And if they pick up a gun, they become a gun roamer. So, yeah. this In a speedrun, this doesn't really often happen that you see them walking back to their 
to their home position because what's the chance you don't kill them or knock them down and yeah romus i want to talk about romus because this is a um this random variable here is uh, that's sort of the meat and potatoes of what ai logic is going to be so unlike uh first off unlike the patrols who always they spawn looking to the right every ai that's a patrol starts looking to the right then they hit a wall and turn left every single ai um the, that's a patrol but the roamers and the stationaries they get a random direction so they spawn looking in a random direction and they spawn with a random move value so now this is um this is a value that ticks down by one every frame so when it says 60 to 120 this is between one and two seconds so every frame this goes down and if it's zero and ticks down again it rolls over it rolls over it gets a new gets a new value between 60 and 120 this one is random in this specific case here they get a random value between 60 and 120 and this triggers some logic this triggers some ai logic and the ai logic of random move is that they roll a new speed either zero or one which is to say either they walk or they stand still and they get a new direction so uh this this is code for <laughs> when it says this this is code for every one to two seconds random time frame they change direction and decide whether they want to stand or move so that's pretty simple that's pretty simple ai logic that's why it's not explained here it's explained further down in like a piece of text but the rest of the ai logic is more complicated so it's this is this is here with the actual good ai logic okay so we're talking about state zero ai so every um think think of normal ai don't think of dogs uh, think of any don't think of policemen think of uh, a normal mafia guy whether it's gun or melee doesn't matter in this case here in state zero they're very very much the same let's start talking about sound so sound is kind of sucky but i want to get it out of the way I actually have an explanation of what how how this works. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure on this, but um, sound is not supposed to be random. There is not supposed to be randomness. I mean, there's almost no randomness supposed to be in sound, because when you shoot or do any of the other actions that create sound, I think only really the metal detector. Every state zero AI, so every AI that's patrolling, roaming. Being stationary so every ai that's not alarmed in some way every state zero ai <laughs> except some um some exceptions except some exceptions uh that's stationary gunmen stationary mafia gunmen can't hear uh, you probably you might be aware of this but policemen stationary gunmen can hear so this does not apply to policemen stationary gunmen and it also um, idle AI, a pissing AI and an AI on the phone, they also can't hear. So any non-idle AI in state zero, except for stationary, except for stationary mafia gunmen. Everyone in a 300 unit distance gets alarmed. And a 300 unit distance um, is further than the normal screen. If you're, if you're like not look, using shift look, if you're just looking at jacket at the middle of your screen, it goes further than your screen. So 300 is quite a lot, but it's as this is as you can see here in Metro, it's not as big as most floors. So it you can be too far away for an AI to hear, but um, usually there's a lot of AI close enough to hear you. Where was I? Here's sound. So all of those AI in that distance. Uh, get a path generated to you and we're going to talk about that later but 
um, they get a path generated to you and the three shortest paths get alarmed. That's supposed to happen. And when they get alarmed, I think, I believe, they get a new path. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> they get a path to you. So normally what you, what you expect to see is that when you shoot once, three AI should come to you. Uh, where do I get a gun? Give me this. We should be shooting once and fuck you. Three AI come, okay? As simple as that, three AI per shot. This is what should happen. There's some more caveats, for example, on, um, on clean hits specifically. Um, idle AI can hear you, and they can hear you over any distance. <laughs> Doesn't matter, though. Clean it is a weird level. So yeah, technically speaking, the three closest AI, um, the three AI with the shortest path to you get alarmed on every shot. And then they get sent to state two. And we're gonna talk about state two. For now, you can just, in your head, you just say, well, those three AI, they hurt me. Um, now you're gonna say three three AI per shot. That's incredible bullshit. I've never seen that in my life. And we're gonna, yeah. Here's the reason why. Welcome to the navigation mesh dimension. Uh, this is from Dumps mod that visualizes a lot of sort of the internal logic of the game. And here you can see this is this grid. I hope you can see there's a grid. So every tile. Uh, you can see here and this grid of course has these uh, what are they called they're not called edges i mm, in german we would say knots <laughs> but yeah these points right the points between the tiles this is where the ai walks so the ai walks from one of them to the next or diagonally so from here from this from these scissors they can walk in eight directions uh, this is why you always see those jaggedy, annoying um, paths, like this one, um, where they walk in right angles and stuff. Not quite right angles. Now, most of this is green, but you see some red, and I call them navigation shadows. It is where the AI, this is, this is where the pathfinding cannot see and the pathfinding cannot go. And I think the pathfinding might not be able to go from, uh, but you don't have much influence on that. So when you are standing in one of these, that is to say, if you're standing below a wall or to the right of a wall, because a wall will always, uh, well, very much like every object, if a wall or an object intersects with one of the tiles, the entire tile is red, the entire tile is useless. So here you can see this couch just barely uh, intersects with these tiles. They're gone, though. You can't navigate there. So what does that mean? You can't navigate there. Oh boy, have I something for you? Um, I just need a gun. I just need a gun. I just need a gun. There we go. So you saw me luring three people, but look at this. So I'm gonna hug this wall. And yeah, oh my god, this, this game does not this game does not cooperate. That's the lowest chance thing I've ever seen in my life. There you go. That's what's supposed to happen. They you could see them react because they got alarmed in a way. Uh, they got alarmed by the sound. However, the the game couldn't create a path to me, so they immediately were thrown back into state zero. And if you remember, a state zero patrol will always look to the right. So we can um, we can make these guys. Ah, we can't. We can't do it. 
There we go. We can make this one patrol look to the right for no reason and then get bounce off the, the doorway. Because we're hugging these walls. So yeah. That's what I wanted to mention about about hearing. Um or actually I could maybe um show some example um relevant examples. Tension. I see people do this all the time. Um we hug them walls. I used to do this too. Uh you you would go ah, fuck you. So what you would end up doing as a new runner, you hug this wall and try to lure these guys from the top. You can't do it. You can't hug this wall and try to lure these people out of this room. You have to not touch the wall. And also another another good one that I find. This one's not as black and white. This one's a bit more random, but if you want to remove randomness out of your run, um, to lure this guy here, this guy is an idle AI. And on clean it, an idle AI will always hear you from any distance. This is why this roamer, you, he will never come here, pretty much, except if he's right at the door. But this guy always should. But he doesn't always do that because, um, I don't know, maybe like you're hugging this object or like you're inside of the door or something. And then the pathfind is kind of yucky. So I recommend that you open the door, go to the middle of the room, and you should get this, this lure nearly perfectly consistently. Instead of like, because what we used to do was like go here, like stand like here to shoot him. And then you would find, you would come here and you would find that um, I can, yeah, this is what happens. So this guy also, this is also an idle AI. Why did you come out? They just, they just get up. The red table is also, yes, exactly. So you shouldn't shoot while hugging this table. You shouldn't hook, you shouldn't shoot anywhere close to anything, to be honest. That's just the rule of thumb. So yeah, this guy just gets up and becomes a gun roamer. This is the worst possible thing that could happen. So you don't want this to happen. And so you don't want to be shooting like in the door or like touching this or touching that. And I think that is all I wanted to say about hearing in this game. Yeah. <sighs> wrong there we go okay notes so now let's actually get to the ai logic so there's some logic to sound but uh, it's kind of it's not not super interesting except from the except for the nav shadows hearing is not very interesting the real interesting thing here is check reload and alert wait so check reload is going to work similarly to random move. If you load into the uh, when you load into the floor, every AI gets a random check reload value between 0 and 30. And check reload does the same thing. It starts at whatever value and it ticks down every frame. Every frame it goes down by 1 and if it's at 0 and ticks down, it rolls over back to 30. This time it's not random or random move it just that there was some randomness in there, but here it's not random, it's just a cycle. It's just a 30 frame cycle, that's half a second. So it rolls over and it activates the AI logic, which... Um, uh, how did I do that? I hate that. Yeah. Um, here, this is in blue, right? Check reload is light blue, and then here, we've got the light blue F. So. The game will check, does the AI have direct line of sight or does the AI have indirect line of sight? If it has neither, nothing happens. As you can imagine, if the AI doesn't see anything at all, nothing happens. Um, but if it has indirect line of sight, it's, it goes straight to state two. So indirect line of sight is seeing through glass, seeing over a table, seeing over a couch. And there's some other small small stuff in the game that can act as an indirect line of sight that you wouldn't really uh, really notice, to be honest. Uh, there's something weird on... There's a really annoying thing on push it 3 <laughs> that creates indirect line of sight, I think, and I hate it. So yeah, if the AI sees you through glass... Okay, so indirect line of sight is now shorthand for glass, basically. 
they immediately go to state 2. And state 2 is one of the states where they can shoot you. If they see you directly, however, if there's nothing between you and the AI, you just like open a door, the AI sees you, they don't immediately change state. What they do is instead they, they activate their alert wait. Their alert wait did not, the alert wait does not start at 10. Uh, their alert wait um, is sort of, it's inactive. It's at minus one the entire time. It doesn't do anything um, until they have direct line of sight on you once. So they have direct line of sight on you, and then alert wait is a 15 frame timer that goes down, so that's a quarter of a second, and then the AI checks again. So already here we can see that an AI that sees you through glass is 15 frames faster than an AI that sees you directly. It's a really weird mechanic. So the AI that sees you directly will wait 15 frames and then do another check. Then they will check again, do I see you directly or not, in fact. If, um, if they see you directly, they change to state one because state one is the one where they can, they can run at you, they can smack you in the face with a baseball bat. And state two again is the glass one. Um, but also if they don't have line of sight, um, if they don't have, if they, they can't see you at all, like you open the door, a 15 frame timer starts and like you close the door and you say oops i didn't um didn't mean to get to disturb you they will see you through the wall they will see you through the door and they will go into st state two which is weird uh, why would they go into state two if they can't see you we will get to that um we'll get to that and we will talk about that so yeah the the important the important thing to remember in this state zero is that first of all they're on a cycle. They basically can they basically open their eyes only once every half a second. So that's twice a second they open their eyes. They can't see you in between. It's a it's like a soft frame rule, like in Super Mario Bros. Except the frame rule is at a, at a random time and at a different time for every AI. So if you have seven AIs on no talk, I think it's six AIs on no talk, each of them can have a different check reload, like 30 different check reloads or 31, I'm not sure. So that's 180 different check reloads in no talk alone. Most of which don't really make a difference, but you get the point. Like you can't consistently tell what's going on. And the other important thing is that if an AI sees you directly, they're faster than if they see you through glass. An exception, the dog. The dog doesn't give a fuck. Um, the dog's alert weight is zero. So where everyone else waits 15 frames, the dog waits zero frames. If the dog sees you, the dog fucking kills you. Okay, so um, a melee AI is 15 frames slower than uh, than a dog. This is why dogs, this is why the dogs on Push It are just so weird. They can theoretically, theoretically, you open the door and their check reload is, is at zero and they see you the immediately the next frame. And which then immediately makes them go to state one and they accelerate to a max speed of five. So dogs are dangerous. Dogs are dangerous and people behind glass are dangerous. Or gunmen behind glass are dangerous. You can imagine that a melee guy behind glass is not dangerous. Okay. State one. State one is a bit simpler. Um, so the melee AI, they, yeah, they have a max speed of three. They have a max turning speed. You might have noticed you can sort of make them run around you. Um, and you die if if your hitbox distance if if the if your hitbox has a distance of less than eight to the AI hitbox, you die. It's just they sort of have a death box in front of them, and it's it goes eight units in front of them. So if you see the AI like do the swing animation or some shit, it has nothing to do with you actually dying. Um, I think the 
animation triggers earlier than they touch you. So it can trigger their swinging animation and you can still not die because you, like they still miss you by a bit perhaps. And then the, uh, the, the gun AI, they, um, yeah, they shoot. <laughs> In state one, if they have direct line of sight of you, um, they shoot, they shoot at you. Also, they run at you up to a distance of 80 units. And then if they're lesser than 80 units, they, um, they slow down. Okay, they speed up if they're further away and they slow down if they're closer. Now, one thing though, if distance less than 80, turn to player at 10, at 10 frames. Otherwise, face player. This one's so messed up. Um, so if you engage a gun AI from really close up, so 80 units is this close. <laughs> from, from here, from the train to this door, that's 80 units. If that's when they see you, if that's when they turn to, to, into state one, they will slowly but surely turn around to you at 10 degrees per frame. So if they're like looking at a right angle away from you, it takes them nine frames to look exactly at you. If you approach them from very far away, oops, we're here. If you approach them from very far away, they snap onto you. So that actually makes, <laughs> that makes AI that's far away even more dangerous than AI that's close by. It's, it's probably a mechanic that's supposed to um, make melee strategies harder. Didn't work too well, um, but yeah, they were trying. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Yeah, that's really state one. State one. Um, state one is not the one that causes confusion. Um, no one's been ever con been confused by state one AI. Uh, just one more thing of yeah, the check re re reload is zero. So now they always have their eyes wide open. At any point in time, they can tell whether they still see you. If they don't see you, or well, if they don't see you at all, they go to state three. So state three is the one where oh, they lost line, they lost sight of you. So they will instead of going straight at you, they will go to the last place they saw you at, on a path. And if they have in, if they gain indirect line of sight out of nowhere. Um, they change to state two because again, state two is the sort of the glass shooty type state. So let's look at the state uh, at the glass shooty type state, which does not exist. It does not exist for melee AI. Melee AI cannot shoot through glass, so melee AI will instantaneously get sent to state three. So when melee AI or a dog or a fatso, if they see you through glass they will instead go to state three and get a path. So um, on tension, you can see that pretty easily what I mean. Uh, uh, this is, I hate this level. I hate this floor. Oh, I just want to show one thing, man. Just don't come out. Yeah, so instead of, yeah, as you can see, they now get a path. They get a path to there because that's where they saw me. And now they turn back into patrols. Of course, that doesn't happen for, gu for gun AI. Um, they will stand still. Well, they stood still until I died because then they lost sight of me. But as long as they can see you through glass, they just stand still and shoot. You would think there is an exception, but that's what's normally supposed to happen. That's why they can have AI that's that's trapped behind glass, right? There's the the one on Assault Three, 
you can just trap AI and it's and the ones on deadline. And they function properly. Yeah. Um so this is state two, state two shooting AI. They they sort of have the same shooting logic. Um where they, they turn towards you or they snap onto you, depending on how far you are. Usually if an AI is behind glass, that usually means they're far away and they will snap onto you right away. So they're extremely dangerous. This is some of the most dangerous AI. Um, shoot, gun AI behind glass. Um, and yeah, as you can expect, if suddenly they get direct line of sight of, on you, they just turn into state one. And if they lose line of sight of you, they turn into state three. As you would imagine, either they get a path because they lost sight of you, or they they might start running towards you because they can now. There's nothing in between you and them. There is one super fucky thing. Um, there's one super fucky thing, and I don't have good video of this. So it says, "If no path stands still." Here, I wrote that there because. We go back to sound. So imagine a completely neutral AI, um, and you lure them with sound. So you lure them with sound that sends them to state two, and it gives them a path. So now you, we go to state two, and it gives them a path. A path means they have to walk on this path. So if we maybe go back to here. So I'm shooting here and then this alarms this AI and they walk on this path to the sound source. Uh, where is it? But now we have a, an AI that's sort of lured, but they are in state two for one frame. And if in this frame they have indirect line of sight, they remain in state two. Uh, which is when they can shoot. So what you can have is an AI that's walking like in weird angles and stuff, and yet they shoot at you. And there is one place where I have noticed that a lot in my lifetime, and I think people have noticed that too in the past. And it is also why I recommend not doing, uh, <laughs> not doing the obvious uh, Neanderthal strat in Hot and Heavy 3. Yeah, we just gotta get there real quick. Give me a sec. I hope I hope the RNG gives me gives me this quite quickly and quite clearly. Nope. So there they saw me and just shot. Okay, they were stationary and they were shooting me. I shot that man in the face. That's not what I meant to do. Let's try again. Yeah, it's it's tough. There. Okay, I hope you saw that. That guy started running towards me, and then he shot me while running. Like, he was running up, and he was shooting to the right. Yes, that can happen, and that can happen specifically if you lure someone while they have line of sight. If you lure someone with sound that has line of sight, they will do that. And this is why on this floor you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, this is why on this floor you should try to lure these guys. There, that's what, <laughs> that's what I mean. That was a very nasty angle. I, I really tried to hide from him there. This is why you should lure them um, like from down here. You should try to like hide behind the door, um, shoot up such that they can't see you when you're shooting. Because it's really awkward, uh, it's really hard to hit them when they're walking like this. Um, and they are trying to shoot. They don't have issues shooting you <laughs> while they walk. They don't mind. So it's really weird. I always felt cheated when this happened. Um, because you would think this isn't supposed to, maybe it isn't supposed to happen. Maybe this, they didn't know that they programmed this in. It's kind of messy how they made it, I think. So they, they might have just not been aware and you only really notice a lot of the stuff you only really notice in speedruns because we're kind of uh, sort of exploring the limits of 
what the AI is willing to do. So yeah, if you if you have line of sight to a to an AI behind glass, make sure not to blur them with sound because it's bad. It's not fun. And uh, state three. So yeah, right. They can go to state three from if they lose sight of you in either of the other states. If they lose sight of you, they go to state three. Basically. Um, Melee AI goes from state zero to state three. Also, if they get indirect line of sight, see you through glass. And state three, yes, state three is just the one with the with the path. And um, uh, we've looked at paths a bit. Um, maybe I wanna like paths are just really bad. Um, why why do why do they walk here like this? I do not know. They do this a lot in front of doors. You're trying to shoot them, and then they do like this uh, maneuver here, and that sucks. And there's also this guy. This guy. This guy is so obnoxious. Because, what you do is, you lure him with yeah. You shoot him from outside, and he hears that. And he will instantaneously navigate to the closest um, navigation grid point. And for him, if you're outside like this, means he will walk like upwards. He will walk in a right angle to your shots. So he will very often walk out of your shots. So when you're doing like you're usually like standing about here and shooting at him, you want to shoot above him. You want to stand here and shoot above him. So that you like on this line basically here, uh, and yeah, this is just because of how the paths work in the navigation mesh. By the way, uh, <laughs> paths are not easy to understand. So when you are inside the door, if you like, all, make it all the way to inside the door or even further in, their path does not look like this. Their path will look like um, I think they go straight down and then in an angle like this. They will be going like this. Uh, it's really awkward and annoying because then again they will walk almost in a right angle to your bullets so they will again run out of your bullets but in the other direction so because of how these paths work and how they are generated this is one of the more um, specific shots in the game you want to shoot from outside and you want to shoot above him it's good fun um so yeah, now let's imagine a, let's imagine a an AI that is on a path. They're running at speed two and they're running to the last source. Their check reload will now be twenty. So they will open their eyes every twenty frames. That's three times a second. That means, on average, on average. So still, any AI that you meet could still have a check reload of zero. But on average, um, in um, state three AIs reaction time quote unquote or reaction cycle more precisely is faster than a state zero ai so these guys are more dangerous um and not only because of the check reload as you can see we don't have alert weight so these guys are always these guys have a potential of a of a one frame reaction time so you could be luring them with sound and then they walk around the corner they see you and they could be on check reload zero and immediately kill you. It's good fun. And that is why you should always be very wary of AI that has been lured. Um, and yeah, they can one hit, they can one frame kill you. That is true for both uh, gunmen and melee and dogs. Uh, not, okay. not quite dogs, actually, never mind. Um, dogs in state three. Here we have we have our uh, nice exceptions here. Uh, because normally you would think if if an AI on a path they get direct line of sight on you, um, they go back into state one because now they want to kill you. And that is true, with the exception of dogs and detectives. Dogs and detectives. They technically have a check reload, but they close their eyes. Uh, anyway, like they cannot see you if they're following a sound source or if they are following the last point they've seen you at. Um, they will not 
they will not see you. Um, I just showed pretty pretty easily on uh, on push it. This is also very relevant on assault two because assault two is the only floor with detectives, and but it is relevant there. So yeah, dogs. Uh, first of all, dogs can't see through glass. They cannot see through glass at all. I don't know why. But they can't see through broken glass. Okay, so now he goes all the way there um, to where he saw me. And um, it can be a bit more clearer here. He will not see me. He will not see me and, while he's on a path. And detectives work the way the same way. So um, you can just run through detect like because on assault you always lure detectors because detectors will always hear you at any distance. Um, so they will always be running after your last sound source. You can just run through them; they will not touch you until they reach the end of their path. Same thing with dogs. This is actually, to be honest, really annoying about dogs because it's really hard to tell um, where they're trying to go and when they will stop trying to go there. I'm not particularly happy about this with dogs and more so with detectives <laughs> but yeah um then um yeah if if a state three ai um if a state three ai gets indirect line of sight And I think this is wrong on the sheet. It's a really, it's, <laughs> this is so fucked up. I think this is level dependent. So a gun, a gun AI should, if they see, if, if they get indirect line of sight, a gun AI should change the state too. Um, oh wait, never mind. <laughs> never mind, never mind. This doesn't happen. Right, so you would think a gun AI that's on a path and they now they see you through glass, they should stop and start shooting you. It doesn't happen though. There is no um they don't get sent anywhere, as you can see. I have update path here. Um I don't even remember where this is true. I think this is level dependent. Um I don't think this happens on assault. For example, if you on a, if you think of assault one and you do like the table strand on the bottom right, you lure them with sound. You're standing behind the table. You're luring them with sound. Um, they do not update their path until they get to the end of it. Because then, if they did update their path, they would want to come around to you, to behind the table, and this does not happen. And this also does not happen on. Deadline if they see you through glass, they do not update their path But then I checked this on other levels and it does happen This is messed up beyond belief. I do not understand how this could possibly be level dependent. I don't know <laughs> I've checked this recently And it's been kind of baffling me So this is really like a path AI reacts really weirdly to indirect line of sight most importantly They do not start attacking you so really, you are safe from guns, uh, or like <laughs> if the AI is if you lure them with sound. And of course, we use this a lot. As I mentioned, we use this on assault. Um, uh, do I have another good example? I don't even think I do. But I drew this twice on assault, so let's see. Kill me. They don't shoot me behind the table. But they but they shoot me when they see me directly. So this is why we do this with the table. Uh, people think it's um, people who don't know about this quote-unquote mechanic think this is not useful. It is super useful. It is incredibly good. 
And then I do the same thing over here with this table. I lure them and they can't see me. They can't see me and I can very easily kill them. And this gets used all over the place. This gets used in, on Assault 3 if you get a knockdown and uh, super important mechanic. For high level play. And uh, yes, so if they do see you directly, they, they do try to attack you. If they don't see you directly, they don't. And if they reach the end of their path, uh, some of them they do like a, they look, do this animation when they look around, like left, right, left, right, and then they turn back into, into their old state. So, man, I wonder if anyone is still listening. <laughs> it's so dense. Um, it's so wacky. Um, yeah, I, and we still have, we still have some wacky things to do uh, to talk about. Uh, not so wacky, actually. Shoot, I didn't even explain shoot. Like. Right? Like, we take shoot for granted. What does shoot even mean uh, here in um, in state one and two? It says um, shoot. Shoot in red text. I barely see it. Shoot. Here, I have a paragraph about shooting. So <laughs> um, shoot works similarly like some other things because it is a... It is a variable that decrements every frame. So it starts at 13. So when an AI spawns, they have a reload slash, let's call it a shoot value of 13. And if they go into, if this only applies to gun AI. So if the gun AI is in state one or two, which is the states where they can shoot you, every frame it decrements by one. And when it rolls over, they shoot. Um, so this is uh, what's interesting about this is that every AI starts with 13, but 13 is not the, uh, the shoot, uh, rate, shoot rate. It's not the rate of fire of any of the guns. Here are the rates of fires of different guns. The M16, five frames. The pump gun, 60 frames. That's a full second. Oh my god. Double barrel, 15. And pistol, 10. That's the, the silence pistol. These are the only guns AI can use. Um, but they start with 13. So let's go through a very simple scenario. Um, you open the door. Okay, there's zero, state zero. Gun stationary, you open the door, you have direct line of sight. Um, or like you open the door and now you wait for that check reload to go down. So that check reload could be anything between zero and 30. Let's say the minimum. Let's say they immediately see you. You open the door, they immediately see you. But still, there's a 15 frame timer after which they check again if they have direct line of sight. Um, or indirect line of sight, either of which will send them to state two. Uh, sorry, either of which will make them shoot. So state one or state two, they will shoot. Uh, now they have to wait though, because only now in state one and two, their reload timer starts decrementing. So now they have to wait another 13 frames to shoot. So a gun AI, a completely fresh sort of you, you, you start a new, like you restart the level, but you've never seen this AI before, they have a minimum time from seeing you to shooting their first bullet of 28 frames. That's almost half a second. And then if they keep seeing you, they keep shooting at their guns. Um, rate of fire, because their reload value gets reset to whatever their rate of fire is. Uh, that makes gun AI safer than melee AI, because melee AI has the same 
um, alert wait 15 frames and the same check reload 0 to 30 frames. But they don't have to wait for their gun to start working. <laughs> they can immediately whack you. So if you go into a room like Hot and Heavy 4 with um, the Jake room, Kill the melee guy first. The melee guy reacts faster than the gun guy. So please do not kill the gun guy first. That is stupid. Also the melee... <laughs> also the gun guy, you can stand inside of him and not die. That's also a bonus. So we talked about this example of a fresh AI that has a minimum of 28 frames. But what if... Let's imagine um, you see an AI with an M16. They start shooting at you, but you dodge their bullets. Now their reload time, like their reload value, is going to be anywhere between zero and five because they've already, uh, they've only now like reloaded, like you know, they've only just pulled the trigger, which reset their value to zero to five. Um, it, re it reset the value to five, but then we don't know how much longer they may have seen you. And um, so you turn the corner and they lose line of sight of you. Now they turn into a state three AI. So they walk on a path uh, to that corner where they saw you. And now they can see you every 20 frames. Every 20 frames, um, they open their eyes. So now their reaction time is um, less or equal to 25 their minimum reaction time is one frame because their reload um, timer could have stopped at zero. Like the last time they saw it was exactly zero. And the check reload could just so happen to be at zero when they get line of sight to you. So an AI that you've disturbed before that is not fresh, they could have all kinds of values. And yeah, as we've already said, a chasing AI, state three AI is more dangerous than a neutral State zero AI. So these can also feel very cheap. <laughs> so when you feel cheaped out by the game, you might want to, maybe you don't want to, but if, if you, if you want to think about uh, how could that have happened, you might want to think about what, what were they doing? Um, were they neutral or were they chasing me or what? Did they see me over glass or something? Uh, yeah, best case scenario in a speedrun, not many AI have the chance of zero, like one frame reaction times, but it does happen. Uh, yeah, that's about shooting. Now there's two really weird mecha like mechanics, two really weird interactions of these AI logics and states that are. One of them is more relevant than the other. The other one is just really weird. There's one a bit that's a bit relevant. I think more so to any percent. I've not, always noticed it a lot in any percent. And that's AI seeing you through walls. Um, I've already told you about like alert wait. Again, alert wait is when they, they see you directly, but they wait 15 frames. So in those 15 frames, you can like turn a corner and then they technically see you like around the corner. But there's a more extreme case of them seeing you through walls. And it used to baffle me, but I figured out how it works. Um, and uh, da -da -da. here. <laughs> Here, you can see it. So normally, alert weight is at minus one because it's not supposed to be, um, it's not supposed to be a thing uh, most of the time. So if they switch, if, if they have indirect line of sight or no line of sight, and they go to state two, their alert weight is reset back to minus one, which is what they started with. So alert weight is just, it doesn't happen, never triggers at minus one. Because it can't, it can't go down and reach zero. It can only go down and reach infinity. But it says at minus one. 
they don't they must have messed this up I, like there's no I, I can't imagine why else they would have done this I think they forgot to add this to direct line of sight so you open the door the eye sees you they, they wait 15 frames and they still see you they still see you completely normally just through no objects at all their alert weight rolls over to 15 and it stays there because now they go into state 1 and their alert weight stays at 15. And the weird effect is that now you can break line of sight with them um, which puts them into state 3. And um, then they go to the end of the path, they still don't see you. You've just, like, you're Bran and you're on the other side of the level by now. Um, they turn back into state zero, but their fucking allot weight is at 15. So now their allot weight in state zero starts decrementing again. So even though the last interaction had nothing to do with what's what you see here, their allot weight goes down, they figure out that they don't have line of sight to you at all. And they go to stage two, which means they get a path to you, which means they saw you through a wall. It is so messed up. I wonder if I can. I didn't think about how I would show this easily. But yeah, I've got this one clip also. Uh... Okay. I should have done this with Brandon. How do I do this? Well, actually, like the, the one place that I've always noticed this in runs was an any percent neighbor skip. When you lure this guy, uh, that's awkward. There, you see this? This is exactly what I mean. Because the last time he saw me was like somewhere close to the door. So he walks to the end of the path and he loses me. And then he starts walking back. Like he starts walking back, but then his alert weight has gone down. And so he sees me through the wall. And this happens like, this happens so much. He does this a lot. Um, it's really confusing. I think people get confused about this a lot because they try to re like they think like oh he lost me, um, and so they try to. You get you get baited into coming to him, but then he turns around and hits you. Uh, it's really annoying. It's it's a bit subtle like this. <laughs> I've got this clip from just. Like minutes ago, well, not minutes ago, two hours ago. Yeah, you can see this. Okay. So here it was like, here, this guy. This guy sees me. And then he saw me, the last time he saw me here. So he gets a path all the way to here, which at the end of the path, he turns back into patrol. And at state zero, now alert weight though kicks in and checks again. Do I have line of sight of him? No, I don't. So I get a path. And he gets a fucking path assigned to him through this door. And he walks through the explosion room. You would think they were not even they wouldn't even be allowed to walk through the explosion room. How is that allowed? It shouldn't be allowed. But it is allowed, and they can open the door and they can make it explode. It's funny, you can stand here in front of this door, and he runs through the door and you die. I don't know why this happened to me, like this happened to me twice today, in quote-unquote run conditions. Like I was doing like, I was playing this level properly, and this happened to me twice. I don't know. I don't know if everyone, anyone has seen this before. I've, I've known about this before, but not under like me actually trying to play the video game. Is super messed up.
It's not the most messed up though. It gets worse. You tell me why this only happened today? I don't, I don't. <laughs> Fine, I don't even care to know then. I don't even care to know then. Um, I'm pretty sure I've just been playing the game as always, and now it's been happening to me. At least I wasn't surprised. Like, I knew exactly what was happening because I've been like fucking around on the level many, many years ago, and this, I found out about it. So I wasn't even terribly surprised. I was just like, why, why is this happening with normal strats? But okay. Except if you mean like it happens to you because you're doing this risky strat. But that's what I'm saying. I've been doing the same strat for six years or seven years. I don't even know anymore. I've been doing the same strat always. Um... And this has never happened until today, and today it's happened twice. Super messed up. But as I said, this is not the messed up, the most messed up thing. AI shooting through wall. AI shooting through wall is the most messed up thing. Look at that. This man tried to kill him th through the soft wall. How perverse is that? He didn't even have Linus, like, he didn't even try to walk after him or anything. How the fuck does this happen? And of course we have the, 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 the most beautiful clip in Hotline history, which just puts, it's just the cherry on top of it all. The most beautiful clip, I, and, I'm I'm ha I'm glad I tried to demonstrate it here because here's exactly it is the yeah it is the neighbor skip where this happens so he loses sight of him then he becomes a roamer and just like randomly walks in that direction and then boom he shoots him through the wall it, this is the most amazing clip i've ever seen like this clip this is this clip is better than the future man clip in hotline 2 like the future man clip in hotline 2 is good this one's better i have no doubts this clip is beyond belief and recently <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why there's scraps on the on the ground too. Recently I figured out exactly how this happens. And it happens actually exactly the same as the seeing through wall. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take you I'm gonna take you through it real real slow. Okay, so this guy, direct line of sight. <laughs> like it was a wall bang. Not quite, but <laughs> So this guy has direct line of sight to him. And then he breaks line of sight. So at this point, he doesn't have direct line of sight, so he gets a path assigned to like this position here at the door. And it goes so quick, man. It happens so quick. So he reaches the end of the path. If he oh I should like make this big. It's kinda hard to see, but. So he reaches the end of the path about here, and then he waits a little bit. Um, and I need you to notice one thing, though. Um, he is hugging this wall. First of all, he's hugging the wall, so luckily he doesn't die, because if he had walked out, he'd be dead. But also, he's hugging this wall, and if we, if we remember the this stuff, if you're hugging a wall from the left, the AI can't get a path to you. So actually, actually, what should have happened here is that this AI also gets a path reassigned here. So what happened here, so he walked on his path, he gets to the end of the path and is like, 
oh, I'm going back to state zero. I'm become gonna become a normal roam, uh, normal patrol. And then just a few frames later, this alert wait ticked down, and it does a check. Uh, do I have direct line of sight? No. In that case, I get a path. I get a path. So he didn't get the path here. So now you ask, why does he shoot? You're asking basically the same question that I asked them myself very early on. When we started, like when Dump and I started, or like when I tr when I started trying to put Dump's findings into a form that makes sense for me, I was like, what's the point of state two? Because here's what happens. If the AI has no line of sight, they can't see you at all after alert wait, they go into state two. Why would they do that? Um, because on the next tick, first of all, melee AI immediately goes to state three. There's no logic there at all. They just get sent on to state three. And state two AI, they also immediately on the first frame, they check, I don't have line of sight, I go to state three. And yet they spend like a frame or maybe half a frame <laughs> in state two. One of the things that happens in state two is that the shoot, the reload timer, goes down. For one frame, for one frame, the AI has a chance to shoot. So exactly the thing that has to happen is that the time he spent here, like, okay, this never happens to me, possibly because I don't like this runner. Okay, this runner is not not bad by any stretch, uh, but he's not like stupendously smooth here, right? Like he, he goes a bit far left. He spends a bit more time here than he should. So that's just about enough time. <laughs> that's just about enough time for this man's reload timer to go all the way to zero. If, if he had spent one more frame here in this room, he would have shot. But because he didn't, this man will go here, spend one frame in state two, and that frame is enough for it to roll over and make him shoot. So it's a, like a, in this case, it was like a one in 13 chance or something. I don't know, like, you can't really put it in that. In that and those kinds of numbers, but it's a small chance that this happens. And this, I don't notice this often, I don't notice this very much in speedruns. And especially not, you know, the more optimized you play, I think the less you see of this kind of stuff. I got shot by that guy standing next to L ones. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. I think the same thing here because here he also he does he doesn't get a path. I think here in the same it's the same thing as in your case, Funk. He just happened to hug this wall, so he didn't get a. This guy didn't get a path assigned. Um, like this this floor is just full of stuff. The path in here must be absolutely atrocious. And I mean, same thing happened here with one, like with the cherry on top, as I said. Um, he has, there, this is the moment that he has direct line of sight. And he must have broken it ex after exactly 13 frames. He must be breaking line of sight. So this guy spends a little bit of time in state zero. Then he spends this one frame in state two. And then he gets the path. The the only like mystery, quote unquote, is how how could he shoot through the wall? Um, I think it's just as simple as the bullets. So you can see not even all bullets spawned, and I can't get the the exact frame on on this Twitch player, but. Um, Shotgun bullet, like all bullets spawn like in front of you. 
right? They don't spawn inside of you. They spawn, I think in, in the player's case, they spawn like just at the tip of the M16 or like inside of the tip of the pump gun maybe. Um, in the AI's case, the bullets spawn way further ahead. It's such bullshit. Um, if both you and the AI shoot at the same frame, their bullets hit you first, simply because they spawn further forward. It's kind of ridiculous. So you can imagine if the AI looks like this, into this wall, and their bullets spawn in front of their gun. Like, they don't even touch the gun for a single frame. They spawn all the way ahead. Um, they can spawn on, on the other side of the wall. I, that's my that's such a simple theory. I think I don't think I need to say much. I don't I don't, I don't think it's too far fetched. Because this hap this is a this is a glitch we abuse in CrossCode. <laughs> we use this in CrossCode, uh, kind of a similar thing where you can hit something behind a wall because we spawn we spawn a hitbox on the other side of a wall. And here as well. So you can see, I think, his the very right, most right bullets of his. Um, because he's shooting at like a bit of an angle, and you can imagine that the bullets they don't spawn in one point, they sp spawn a bit spread out already. I think. Um if you do if you uh, if you record your own gameplay and you look at like a single frame of an AI. Uh, shooting a shotgun it should look like that they should be spread out a little bit so you can see the the left ones because they're spread kind of like this the left ones already hit the wall instantaneously on frame one and the other the other few they make it through you can't frame forward in this game so yeah all but one bullet this is the best thing about it all but one shotgun pellet immediately hit the wall and they got like the as if he shot the wall from that side and just one of them goes through and kills him it's insane um yeah, maybe, maybe if you can, if you get them precisely enough to stand in front of the door, in front of the wall. Yeah, maybe you could. Maybe you could. That's a good idea. No, didn't think about that. So yeah, <laughs> AI. In this case, he tried to shoot him from really close, but like I've noticed cases where the AI is like really, really far away and they try to shoot you through walls. Um, maybe there's like, maybe there's like still some more wacky things that can happen, but this is the one that I've noticed come up and that I've noticed has this pattern. So yeah, I'm not saying this is everything that, that there is to know, but these are the ones that I know happen. And I know why they happen. Oh, we never talked about idle AI. So yeah, maybe I should just finish this and then we're done. Unless we want to talk about melee. Idle AI. Idle AI is just normal AI, but more dangerous because their check reloads. The check reloads are different, they are shorter, and the offsets are different. I don't know, the offsets are just like 10 always, I don't know why. But yeah, a sitting guy is not dangerous, his check reload is 30. But the phone guy and the smoking guy have a check reload of 15, so their average reaction cycle, or like their average reaction time is 7. You have to assume you walk into a room, they have a reaction time of 7. Um... And they don't have alert weight, so they don't have the 15 frame buffer. They just don't have it. So you can, again, um, a melee guy could theoretically, like if they spawn as a melee guy, because here's what happens, right? They randomly become a melee or a gun. 
except phone guys always become an AI and guards always become AR. But the other ones sitting, smoking, peeing, they randomly become either melee or Roma. And if they become melee, they can immediately swing. So um, theoretically, if you're saying Decadence 1, the couch guy, you can open the door and he immediately gets up. That could happen. I mean, with the doors and the line of sight is always like you don't even know when they get line of sight, but it doesn't happen much because he's, you know, on average a sitting guy is slow. But it could happen. But then um, if they are gone, again, the gun has an inbuilt 13 frame buffer, so they have to wait 13 frames. They basically they put pull the trigger and it takes 13 frames to shoot. So the phone guy in push it two um, has a minimum shooting time of um, 13 frames. Vengeance one, yeah, I, I guess technically the the one guy in Vengeance one. Um, but oh wait 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 yeah for melee melee yeah right that's why that guy sucks oh, I closed the game didn't I doesn't matter yeah vengeance one you open the door and he swings at you because he sees you going through the door that's that's weird that, I don't know if that happens with other masks. I don't know if he sees you like clipping through the door. I do think that can happen. I think that happens in Vengeance 3 at the very end. If you're on like the inside of the door where the where the hinges are. So yeah, I'd lay I first of all they react differently, they react quickly, and also they randomly become a different AI. If you kill them, well if, yeah, right. I should say they become a different AI. Once you activate an AI, they don't return into that. They become a gun roamer or they become a melee stationary, and that's what they are. From that moment on, they will be just the same as those. Um, and um, if you kill them, yeah, these these guys are specific. Each of them is different on what they do if you kill them before they see you. That's why on Vengeance 2, to get a rifle from the... Because you want to get... This must be wrong, right? This guy must always drop an M16. Although you can already not trust Vengeance. Some AI are just hard-coded. Or like some levels are hard-coded. Because the sitting guy on... Vengeance 1 always drops a baseball bat. And I guess the phone guy on Vengeance 2, he always drops an M16. I don't know if this is just wrong here or if Vengeance is hard. Oh, yeah, th this guy. Right, and the pissing dude on Metro can't drop a gun, but... <sighs> All right, sorry. Sorry, yeah, I got it wrong around. Thanks, Funk. Right, you want him to see you, so he spawns as a gun roamer AR. He spawns as an AR roamer. That's why you want him to see you. Otherwise, he drops any type of gun, which can be an, a, a, a pump gun. Actually, he doesn't drop any type of gun. He drops a, either a pump gun or an AR. Right, thanks, Funk. That's the one. Um... That's why, yeah, uh, you want to you wanna be somewhat familiar with the specific AI so you know exactly what gun you want from them. Shitting man on clean hit. There's a shitting man on clean hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shitting man on clean hit. The one on floor one, bottom right. You can drop a melee when knocked down. Yes. So here, on knockdown... If you knock them down before they see you, they can drop either. Apparently that's true for all of them. Just, you know, normally we don't want the knockdowns.
Vengeance. Vengeance is so full of these guys. So yeah, Vengeance 3 has both. Vengeance 3 should have a f smoking and a peeing guy, right? And you want them both. Yeah, so the first one... Yeah, that's why you want the door kill. If you do the door kill, he drops a gun. Guaranteed. If you knock him over, you have a 50-50 chance. And then the peeing guy has a 50-50 chance anyway, apparently. Yes, that sounds true. So yeah, this is why we want to be familiar with some of these, so we can know um, what kind of guns we can get from these guys. So yeah, it's been an hour and a half, pretty much exactly, which is what I planned. I'm kind of glad I got it in that amount of time. Uh, and surprised, also, that I got in that amount of time. Smoky Man always drops a bat. That's so... Is that so? On knockdown. Yeah, that's what I assumed. Always drops a bat. That's interesting. Yeah, there are... I'm not exactly like I'm not 100% on these to begin with, and then there's some hard coded ones, as I said. So it's not so many I that you can't like just learn them by heart. <laughs> like most most of the individual persons in the game, uh, you know, after a while you just you just know them, each of them personally. But this is a this is a useful starting point. The floor three smoking guy can actually drop an AR if he sees you pass through the door. Can he? How are we about to end now? I would want to end it now because I'm gonna rewatch this and if it's um, if it's watchable at all, I'm uploaded to YouTube. I'm not gonna go into all these. Let's just say idle AI are weird, okay? Let's just idle AI react quickly, and they have weird gun dropping patterns that uh, we're not 100% on right now. I think it's not too mega important. There are very specific ones that are important, like Vengeance 2. Um, I guess we, yeah, we can go into melee. I can maybe do like a melee addendum here. He either whacks you if he spawns with Golf Club, but if he spawns with an M16, he drops that. Smoking. Oh yeah, well that makes sense. Of course he can drop with either. Smoking guy can drop an AR if you. Ah, that's what I ah, right because yeah. Ah, now I know what you mean. Yeah, because you can like again you can clip with Brandon right where you can clip through the door on the side where the hinges are, so he sees you for like that one frame. And then either you die because he's melee or he drops an AR. Yep, that makes sense, thanks. <laughs> that can happen. We shouldn't rely on that though, but yeah, it can happen. <laughs> I can go through like some extra stuff here. Um, now, we were talking about weapon drops. Um, so, I think this is always good to know. Apparently, <laughs> there's always people who don't know these things. Weapon drops are have some amount of consistency. Uh, you may have noticed that. Well, if you if you only run all those, you have not noticed. But if you ever run any percent, uh, you will have to learn to drop your gun, like drop your gun, not throw the gun. A weapon, whatever. Drop a weapon by holding right click. 
by holding right click you drop your weapon to your left shoulder as seen here there's like some variation and there's always also some variation in 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 the speed it can drop with a speed of one up to a speed of three so it can go different distances in any percent this is very relevant it's really annoying when it goes really far So yeah, um, this is pretty obvious that it always drops to your left side. Uh, but the enemy ones are less obvious. If you do a standing execution, it always drops to their right side. So that becomes that becomes relevant on, um, for example, Decadence 1. Decadence 1, you go in and you do a standing execution on the first guy you see. And if you want to if you want to save like one frame, you can look at his shoulder and then already know where his weapon drops. Actually, in in ILs, this is really nice. In ILs, um, you just restart the level over and over until his shoulder looks in the direction that is useful to you, because you want him to drop his weapon like, forwards from your where you are looking, so to the right. So you want him to be looking up. So this is a an IL technique that takes into account uh, AI direction, spawn direction. So that is a somewhat re uh, relevant thing. Also showdown, if you go, after vengeance, you go into showdown, it's kind of nice to know where the double barrels falls. No one does Deccan's IL's like that anymore. Someone will. It's, I'm just saying, like, I've, I've, I've done this in many ILs, but I remember it's very clearly um, for, decad for decadence. Man, just because you and I don't do it doesn't mean no one does it. Like, people still do ILs that aren't world record. It doesn't matter. Holy shit. Um, showdown. I think in Showdown this is relevant. Um, it's nice to know where the double barrel falls. Melee kills. Melee kills are amazing because these are not dependent. There's no no arrow here. They always fall to the southeast. Always fall down right. No matter the orientation of you or the enemy or anyone. Um, they always fall to the bottom right. So um, if I hadn't closed the game, where do I am? Uh, Steam Cloud error. I don't know. Uh... So, well, this is first of all, this is relevant just because you know where they drop. So, tension two is a very obvious one. Whether if you melee that guy in front of in front of the exploding room, if you melee him. His shotgun will always fall underneath that table, which is really annoying, and it always drops there because um, the falling direction is consistent, more or less. It always falls down right. The distance is not consistent. Uh, the distance is... <laughs> right, I have this thing here. That's kind of sus. Okay, I don't want to do this. Um, let's do... So this quadruple kill is very easy because as they come from here, as they come from the top left um, and you whack them, their weapons fall away from them. So you can smack them, their weapons fall to the bottom right, but you're going to the top left, so uh, there's no domino here. This is really nice. But then the opposite happens on tension, or tension two at the end, anyway, with the strat that I do, um, or with the, maybe it's more relevant as a Tony strat. I fucking can't believe he did that. Ah, oh, Tony sucks, also. Why did he pick that up? I just can't even make it to that floor now. Mm. 
Okay. So first of all, we notice this guy always drops. Like this time it dropped really slowly, but if it drops with speed two or even three, it can drop all the way to over there and you have to go like around. Uh, okay. So if you do this, I, well, if you come from here, I'm so shit at this. If they come from the bottom right, you always guaranteed to have a knockdown. Because if there's a guy in the front and a guy in the back, you want to hit them. Then you hit the first one, his gun drops to the bottom, his melee drops to the bottom right. That's where the next guy is, so he gets knocked down and you're like in pain. Less so with Tony, but with Brandon you're really in pain. Um, this is also relevant assault. I hate when people do this, so I'm gonna mention this. I mention this a lot. Just this is at the very end of the screen, so. Oh my god, this is the worst pattern I've ever seen in my fucking life, man. Hello, please. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna lure them and we don't wanna shoot like the bottom one. Because if we shoot him, his weapon will drop there. So we shoot the guy as behind. Well, we tried, we really tried. But what you wanna do is, if there's two guys coming, you shoot the one that's behind and his drop, his weapon drops away from the other guy. And then you shoot the guy in front. Um, this is super annoying when you get the knockdown and I hate it and everyone should hate it. Um, mm, wrong window. So, yeah, I mean, that's gun kills, right? That wasn't even melee kills, that's gun kills. So I'm just telling you. It's nice to know where they drop. Um, so as you can see, in the gun shooting direction, you're shooting from the left here. It drops to the left backside. It's kind of an awkward angle, but... There you go. And knockdowns also have a specific, but you don't really care about knockdowns. You shouldn't get knockdowns. Just try not to get knockdowns. They also have a specific direction. Actually, though, two to four units. I'm wondering if this is correct. I wonder if I'm wondering if there's different kinds of knockdowns right now because I'm. I was so sure that uh, door knockdowns have a speed zero here. Because on push it. Now this is a relevant IL strat. This relevant IL knowledge that I acquired. When you knock this guy down, his weapon will drop with a random speed and I'm pretty sure it just dropped with zero. If it drops with zero, you can pick it up right away without stopping, which is super nice. Uh, maybe with Richard you can almost always do it, but with Brandon it's pretty tough. Like right there you saw it just go a bit, but if it just drops and immediately settles, you can pick it up right away. So that's also some randomness for you there. That's not relevant very much to full game runs, but yeah, there's one IL where, where it's relevant. Um, hurtboxes. This one's super funny, super good. This is your hitbox. This is what normal hitboxes should look like. 16 by 16, that's one tile. That's as big as one tile in the game. That's for most people. I say most people, it's probably not even true. Gun patrols, melee patrols, and melee stationaries do not have this. They have 16 by 8, and the funniest thing is it doesn't turn with them. So when this guy turns around, if he looks down, then the front of his hitbox is 16. Like, you look from the bottom, you try to shoot him, his hitbox looks almost normal. But if you shoot him from, like, left or the right, no matter where he's looking, the front of his hitbox will be eight, so you can shoot through his through uh, his shoulder like this, and you can do it a lot. And it's really annoying, and it's even worse when they walk through walls and everything. What about dogs and fatsos? I'm not sure. I think fatsos probably just have a 16 by 16. I have no idea about dogs. I don't know why we don't have them here. Oh, I know why we don't have them here, because I did this with the dumps mod, 
that shows like dumb smart um lets you show the hurt boxes but he didn't implement it for dogs and fats so i just never found out um what their hurt boxes are so this is fun um these are what you have to hit with bullets to kill them they are also what you have to hit with melee except there's more so here's a guy and here's you here's your hurt box here's his hurt box this is your melee hitbox. If you swing your melee weapon, you create the square in front of you. It's maybe like 20 units ahead of you. So one and a half tiles, I don't know. Um, if, the, if this green thing touches him like this or like this, if it touches this blue or this green, he dies. So they have... But to kill him with bullets, you have to kill the blue. To kill him with melee, you have to kill hit either of these. So you can... They, I think they implemented this so that you can like stand it really close to him. If you're like almost inside of him and you're swinging, you still hit this extended melee hurt box that they have. And it turns like around. It's, it's, like not, it's not on the top left like this always. This one turns with you. So if you turn around in your swing, your melee hitbox, it moves around with your swing, with your mouse. And this this green extended melee hitbox of this AI also turns around with it. So, um, so yeah, if this touches this, they die. Uh, I would like to mention that, yeah, I would really like to stress that you can uh, melee once and you can like swing your mouse around 360 and then you cover all this like all of this is dead if you just swing your mouse around a lot i keep saying this to everyone and i don't think people are listening enough uh really swing your mouse and now this green this green box is active for the amount of frames that's dependent on your weapon uh, which we can see here. This is the frame. This is the frame data. The frame data here is a bit um, <laughs> not as full as the one on Plush's uh, sheet, but it's good enough for our purposes. So, if you swing your fists, you have fourteen active frames. So for fourteen frames, this thing appears and it kills him. And then there's six extra frames where you still see the animation, but you can't kill anyone. Um, so these are the bad frames, these are the good frames. And the most relevant weapons, of course, are the bat, the pipe, the golf club, and the knife, because these are the ones you can get uh, very, very often, because that's what the AI drops. The bat, the pipe, and the golf club. They have the same active frames. Every weapon has the same range, it has the same hitbox. Every weapon is ge geometrically the, the same, they only differ in frame data. And the bat, the pipe, and the golf club have the same active frames. So their, their killing swing is the same amount of time. The only thing that differs between them is the downtime that comes afterwards. How long you have to wait afterwards to swing again or to throw or to swap your weapon. That's the only difference between these. And so this makes it very, very easy to see that the bat is straight up worse than the pipe and the pipe is straight up worse than the golf club. This is as, this is clear, as clear as day and night. The golf club is better than the pipe, the pipe is better than the bat. And all of them are worse than the fists. So Tony's fists are some of the very best weapons in the game. Only the few that are better are the knife, uh, the crowbar, the pan, and like, yeah, the baton, uh, and the machete. <laughs> so, yes, Tony's fists are better than most things you can pick up, except maybe the knife. Yeah, I'm, except the knife, 100%. So the knife has two inactive frames. So that sounds as if there's two frames in which you're in danger. Not really, 
Um, you can just keep swinging your knife. I mean, there's two frames in which you can't swap your weapon, so if you really need a gun suddenly, um, there's two frames where you can't do it, but I, I wouldn't be too worried. If you just keep holding left click with the knife, well, if you keep holding left click with the bat, you can tell that more than half the time you're not even attacking. More than half the time you're not doing anything. Um, the knife, it gives you two frames that are inactive. However, it is it is mathematically impossible to die. Uh, so I just want to... Um, yeah, Jackal and I would like to really uh, speak directly to Snowfats uh, that he may please put an e a PSA on his tutorial video where he says that the bat is somehow better than other weapons, which it isn't. Um, it is not better than any weapon. It is only as bad as some other weapons, like the katana or the axe. Um, and also the knife does not put you in danger of anything. Um, in the two frames, in the, in the two frames that you, you're not active with the knife, nothing can touch you. Um, the, <laughs> you can, because of this, uh, here, like this is how far away your hitbox is. So this would be the last the last moment that you're not hitting the AI is when the AI is over here. And then the AI has two frames that come close to you, which would put them like here. And then their hurt box, like their their hitbox, in fact, only sends eight units, which is not far enough to hit you. It still puts you two units away from danger. So you actually Assuming you aim properly, so if you aim well with your knife and the eye isn't like fucking around and like go, like hitting you sideways, like of course there are situations where you get caught off guard, but if you lock on, if you lock on and you just hold left click, you cannot die to a melee eye, no matter which speed they are going, no matter which speed you are going, it's impossible. Even with Brandon, you have a buffer of two units. The knife is perfectly good. Uh, in fact, the knife is as good as it gets, even though technically the machete and biker's cleaver and the sledgehammer have no inactive frames at all, the knife is still better because the knife only has 10 total frames, so you can swap the knife more often, and also you're still untouchable with the knife. So please do not listen to Snowfans when he says take the bat over a different weapon. Do not take the bat over any weapon. Except maybe the axe. Except maybe the broken pool cue <laughs> and the pot. The pot. Uh, I'm not sure. No, the pipe is still arguably worse than the pot. Um, so yeah, do not. Same thing goes for the baton. The baton is even better than the knife. The baton is... Is it better than... It's not better than the knife because it has more frames. But it's almost as good as the knife. It is better than the machete. Always pick up a knife. If you if you get a, if you get a knife for free, take the knife, and do not, um, under any circumstances, stop holding left click. There's no reason not to hold left click with a knife. Do not try to react to enemy reaction times with the knife. It makes no sense. You don't have enough active frames to sort of pre, like pre swing. Just hold left click with the knife and with the machete and with Black's cleaver and the sledgehammer, which, I mean, 37 frames of sledgehammer is a fun time, but um, eventually you want to get rid of the sledgehammer and the sledgehammer says no. And it's executions really slow. Did I forget anything about melee? I don't think so. Jekyll says the katana is better than the bat, but <sighs> I'm not sure about that. I don't like the katana. The thing, the good thing about the one good thing about the bat is that you you use it so often that you get used to it. So you should be at some point you should be comfortable enough with it, at least outside of the situations where the bat literally doesn't work. There are places where the bat does not work.
which happens to be, in fact, Hot and Heavy 4 is one of those places where the bat, under some circumstances, just literally doesn't work. The katana is better because it doesn't spawn, huh? I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe the thinking about it, maybe the katana is better than the bat. Yeah, it's just. It has less active frames than the knife. It's kind of, kind of whack. So can we? We don't even have a bat. Oh there. So first of all, it's bad here. Um, So what can happen here is that you swing at him and you don't, don't you're too slow to swing again for him in this thread. This is a very advanced thread, so yeah. As you can see, it took me really, really long to kill the top one after the bottom one. It took really long. Um, that is enough time for him to turn around and shoot you. So this can happen um, if he doesn't see you early but he sees you late but not too late you're dead you can't get through this pattern with the bat without you know stopping and changing the cycle changing the cycle that's like one thing i forgot to mention earlier so there's this thing about check reload where um this is like way too late this is an addendum that comes too late um but let's talk about check reload real quick um whoops so technically it's random. If you load into a floor, you have no information about the floor at all. You have to assume that the reaction cycles are random. But once you have one piece of information, um, now I know that every sing this should be consistent. I should be able to make it past the glass every single time without them shooting. Just because they're, they're, um, the check reload cycle is set up in the way. And now I've stopped a little bit to have a different, now they're shooting. So this should be pretty consistent. Now they should be shooting at me every time. And this is of course the opposite of what you should be doing. Um, you should not be stopping because you had a good pattern. Um, but of course what can happen is that you have a bad pattern. So if you have a bad pattern and you recognize, oh, I can't make it past the glass with Tony, um, you can remember, oh, I can just like try and get in a different time window of the check reload cycle by stopping a little bit. And chances are it works. Like um, like 95% of the time, if you get shot the first time going through the glass room, then stopping a little bit um, somewhere before the glass room will let you through. It's uh, really convenient and it's just a... Uh, this happens because of how the reaction cycles work. Practicing this room with a bat, it just doesn't work with Brandon. The, this room with a bat with Brandon, sometimes you just can't do it. Tilda didn't even know this. Uh, Tilda doesn't play Tony, so of course he didn't need to know this. What a chat, absolute chat that doesn't play Tony. That's my kind of guy right there. Okay, I think I've said everything I wanted to say. If I do upload this, I have to rewatch this at some point, but it's two hours long and I don't wanna. But yeah, if I do upload this, uh, the link to the data dump should be somewhere close to it. So you can have a look at the data dump and say, what the fuck does this mean? And then you have to watch the video again for me to explain it. I hope there's no more questions. If you still have questions, you're dumb. It's just really low IQ. I've explained things for two hours. You should know everything now. Damp data, that, that's too much. That's, that's across the line, Tilda. I'm done. We, we all learned something valuable today, Funk, did we? 
We learned that Hotline is 10 years old. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations to Denaton. The three enemy lure. Yeah, I think every single person here probably at least does one thing they didn't know. There's a lot to know. All right, then. Uh, it's 10 o'clock. That's enough, hotline. Have a good night. Bye.